You know, one of the concepts that I never really agreed with was New Year's resolution because the calendar year flips. And then when it's January 1st, so many people say, oh, new year, new me. I'm going to be making all these changes that I've been thinking about making for the longest. I'm going to become a new, better person. And I always thought, man, if, if you really felt like you needed to change a lot of this stuff, then wh why didn't you just work on it in the present? Why did you have to wait till the new year? Uh, so with the Ravens offense, is it going to be new year, new me? Or is it going to be a lot of the same old stuff that we felt the Ravens should have been worked on in the past? What is going to be the Ravens offensive mindset heading into 2022? Well, to answer that question, we brought on a very, very special guest to help us break it all down. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, a uh, very special guest in the building today. Uh, we got my boy, Yuri. Um, before we get into it, Yuri, let everybody know where they can find you at. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore, Underscore, Underscore. Oh, that's a lot of underscores. Three underscores. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll have that link. Just in case you get confused about our underscores, we'll have that linked in the description. And, and something that we're going to go over today is the Ravens actually underscoring. Because a lot of times in key moments, uh, the offense, it was just a little bit rough. And we know a lot of that was due to injury. Some of it was due to play calling. Uh, but the offensive mindset overall for the Ravens, how do you feel about that going into this season? Well, it's I'm, I'm a little nervous. Uh, I think Boz was on here the other day, and uh, he was mm -hmm. talking about the, the reversion to 2019. And that's that's very worrisome to me. Um, I understand the highs of 2019 and the, mm -hmm. the MVP and the Lamar throwing for like 3,600 yards, 32 mm -hmm. touchdowns, MVP, such and such. But the NFL is a, it's like a pendulum. It's always evolving. It's always, what can you do next? How can you evolve? And mm -hmm. I feel like going into this season, we need to have an offense that has some sort of combination of, I know while last year we were down 10 and that forced our passing offense to work. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like some sort of mix between 2021 and 2019, something like that. It, there just needs to be, they can't just go back to 2019 and, um, and see if it works. So I, I promise you it will not. <laughs> Why don't you think it'll work if they try to go back to that? Cause there's uh, 17 games of film on how that 2019 offense runs mm. and there's also uh the same concepts that greg roman deployed in san francisco so teams and teams will go back to that film teams will go back to 2019 film and um it may work in the regular season but i just don't think it's got the uh the right stuff for the postseason mm. okay and when you talk about the right stuff what, what do you feel like the ravens need to add uh, to this current offense to just help them ascend to another level? Well, we've talked about acknowledgement, seems like, on Twitter about the uh, the wide receiver, too. So, obviously, a, uh, a a decent wide receiver, too. Someone along the lines of uh, Robbie Anderson, Tyler mm -hmm. Lockett. I understand that asking for Alpha with this team to give up a first or a second round pick is – it's like you know wishing upon a star but <laughs> i uh i can at least ask for a, a decent number two but um I, I just hope when we look at the games next year mm -hmm. that there's some sort of continuity there's you know there the spacing obviously the spacing's got to be fixed um and a little more a little more structure to be honest uh even if we run with the guys we got mm -hmm. there was the other day, Greg Roman's 2014 playbook got uh, basically dumped on Twitter. And, um, you know, there's they, there's a lot of freedom for the wide receivers. And I think this year, with the young guys, um, keep it structured. Mm. That's a really, really good point because um, I know that's been talked about a lot as far as uh, from Hollywood and 
with Mark Andrews, the fact that those guys with this offense, they just had so much freedom. Um, but at the same time, those were also Lamar Jackson, his go-to guys, the guys that had the most freedom. Uh, of course, Hollywood, he would get a lot of targets. Mark Andrews, he would get a lot of targets as well. So do you feel like maybe structuring the offense, it could lead to Lamar Jackson really not having that necessarily go-to guy? Or do you still, still think that he would have that same repertoire with the Mark Andrews and whoever, whoever else could step up as that wide receiver? Right. I I, I still think you can have um, in sort of sense of a number one or a go-to guy with Mark. It's more the fact of the receivers were given freedom, like with option routes. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a play where there's two receivers on the right side and both of them are basically reading the defender and that would determine how they would option. Both of them are, are comebacks. Both the read is, okay, if the defender's doing this, so let's say a defense is playing a certain coverage, mm -hmm. they would they would both read the defender and basically do double comebacks. And that's where you see like the nasty spacing. So I still think that mm -hmm. you can have a, um, a someone like, like a go-to guy, but mm -hmm. still keep the offense, you know, kind of a little more strict and structured. Okay. I feel you. So now with the offense, um, speaking of the past catches, you know, this is one of my favorite subjects. I always like to get everybody's viewpoint on the Ravens current group. Uh, of wide receivers right now guys who a lot of people assume are locks including myself uh will be Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay, James Froshe, and Tylen Wallace how do you feel about those group of young wide receivers for the Ravens uh it's I would say it's like a love-hate relationship you know what I mean um there's a day where I wake up and I'm like remembering what Devin Duvernay was in Texas and going back and looking at what he did at college, it's like, wow, what, where did the, the, you know, the fall off the translation just didn't come. But then it's like, uh, he's gotten in game opportunities and maybe not made the best of them. Um, but then you remember the, like the one end around against, I think it was, uh, Cincy where he ran for a whole time. I think it was, it was not Cincy. There was some team where he ran like a 45 yard end around. You're like, wait, I, think I know that guys. I don't remember that. Yeah, it might it might have been one of the two, but um, I like our guys. I like Devin Duvernay. Mm -hmm. I like James Rochet, and I really like Tyler Wallace. I, I think he, if if we could like combine all three of them in like a cloning lab, I think we'd have the receiver <laughs> we're looking for. But um, my thing is, if these guys are so good, why is there such a fear of just adding somebody else to the room? If just adding. Not even like a, a crazy trade target, like a Darius Slayton, Jalen Rager. It just seems like fans are like so hesitant to have some competition in the room. It's just um, hmm. if Good you time. can't if you can't have top end talent, get talent by competition. That's kind of my motto. Hmm. Okay, yeah, because that competition could uh, really bring out the best um, in the current wide receivers. Now you brought up a Jalen Rager. Uh, you brought up a Darius Slayton. Both of those guys are guys that can stretch the field. Uh, is that the type of wide receiver that you think the Ravens should add? If you even feel like the Ravens should add a wide receiver, uh, maybe not the exact players. Obviously, I do like Darius Slayton a lot, but I think they need somebody that can offer what we don't already have. I mm. feel like. They should, they should definitely look for someone that can stretch the field. Mm -hmm. But if they can't, just get somebody that can get open. Like, that's all I'm asking for. Just get someone that can get open. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's pretty straightforward. Now, um, you talked about via trade, different trade scenarios. You brought up a title locket. Uh, you brought up Slayton, Riga. Um, But as far as free agents, and I know it's, it's, it's tough pickings right now. Um, shout out to George, by the way, for the Steelers. But with um, with with the free agents that are out there right now, do you feel like any of them could really help push the Ravens forward? Okay, I think you if answered you, already with that hesitation. If you uh, maybe if you close one eye and like look at them real closely and see like the past days, um, I think Odell. 
so if if your goal is okay, let's see what these guys got and have a fail safe plan. Someone like Odell hmm. definitely intrigues me a lot. Oh. Um, if you're looking for just a straight up mentor, Julio Jones is definitely another intriguing name. Uh, I remember last year during the all season leading the the bring Julio to Baltimore Charge. So mm-hmm. I I could do it again, man. I could do it again. I'll I'll, I'll I'll squint real closely at him and uh, and just see like the old 2016 Julio. Mm, 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 mm. Julio, man, Julio, that 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 would be a very very interesting one. Um, I feel like I almost wish this was like Madden or something because if it was me and Madden, I would just like sign all of those guys. I would sign a Julio. I would sign Odell Beckham, even if I wasn't getting back until later. Um, I probably wouldn't sign T.Y. Hilton. I just I'm I'm not a big uh, T.Y. Hilton guy. Uh, but maybe that's just me. Um, now, what a, have you gotten a chance to look at any of the undrafted uh, rookie free agents at wide receiver? Yeah, I've looked at a few. I've looked at uh, Shamar. I've looked at mm-hmm. Polk, um, Devon Williams, and not really. Oh, okay. uh, Slate Bolden a little oh, yeah, bit. Slate. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Now, yeah. And from, yeah. from, from the guys that you did look at, uh, which one stood out to you and what stood out to you about them? Shamar Bridges definitely stood out a lot. Um, I really liked his game. I like Makai Polk a lot. Makai Polk kind of reminds me of like Benjamin Victor reincarnated sort of mm. as a, you know, like a practice squad champion, so to say. But um, maybe one of these guys makes a roster spot, but I, I'm just not counting on it. I I like their UDFAs for reasons. So. Mm. Okay. We'll see. So with the Ravens offensive mindset, um, the way that, and we talked about them possibly going back to some things that they did in 2019. Uh, right now, you have J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards both coming back. Justice Hill, too, from major injuries. Um, Nate McCrary, he's still there. Uh, they signed Mike Davis, drafted Tyler Beatty. Um, and I know they have an undrafted rookie free agent at running back as well, but who do you think how, how many running backs do you think make this Ravens roster and which ones do you think end up making the cut? I would go with uh, Dan Reese does a really good job with like averages from 2019 till now on how many players at the spot are on the roster and the Ravens mm-hmm. I think average for running back was like 3.6. So I think all four make it. I think Mike Davis, Beatty, Okay. Dobbins and Gus make it. And I would assume that one of them start on some sort of weird IR pup list that, you know, mm. holds them out till week six or so. And then they move around. Oh, you know, you're not looking forward to, uh, you you're not thinking that JK or Gus are going to be ready. One of those two. I think one will be ready. And I think one will probably need more time. Mm. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how it goes now. Um, in order for a running back to have success, whether it's J.K. Gus, Beatty, or Mike Davis, and who, whoever the running backs are going to be, in order for them to have true success, uh, one of the best factors for them uh, is the offensive line that's in front of them. Uh, how do you feel about Ravens' offensive line right now? I, I'm feeling really good about it. I think it's a healthy competition in left guard. Uh, Linderbaum is the center. Uh, I don't that apparently that's controversial on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Kevin Zeitler, you know, he was really good last year. Uh, someone is going to be able to play right tackle, whether it's Macari, <laughs> Moses, or Jawan yeah. James. Uh, but mm. looking like it's going to be Moses. Um, mm-hmm. It's just Ronnie Stanley is like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, why are we doing this again? Why? I, I wish the guy was out. Maybe not out of OTAs, but there was. It's just been, you know there's not been a lot of reports about them. And so you, mm-hmm. you kind of just, you're, you're speculating again at this point. So, but I, overall, I feel really good about it. It's a top 15 ish group and it can be a top 10 group is if, uh, if Stanley's healthy. Yeah, for sure. I, I think they, um they have so much potential there. When you think about it, when, when you think about the starters, uh, Ronnie Stanley, whether it's Ben Cleveland or Tyree Phillips at guard, Linda Baum, Zeitler uh, and Morgan Moses, then you got, Guys that 
uh, could possibly be backups like a Patrick McCary, a uh, uh, Tyree Phillips. Um, and just you, you have guys that you have a lot of depth. You got Daniel Filele, and he's more of a developmental guy. But you have a lot of depth that uh, that'll be ready. And then you mentioned Jawan James, too. A lot of times um, I forget about him that he's still there. Uh, but that's a good thing because the more offensive linemen and the more quality offensive linemen, uh, the better, even though he hasn't played football uh, in a little while. But he still does have that experience. Um, and, yeah, so much just depends on uh, Ronnie Stanley. So much depends on the health of Ronnie Stanley and if he's going to be back to uh, being himself uh, at left tackle because uh, we remember last year when he did he, – he, he came back, but – he, uh, he he wasn't looking good in that game against the Raiders. And then that was, yeah, that was the last time that we saw him. Um, so we'll see what goes down with him. Now, um, Ravens quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Uh, what do you feel like he needs to do to take uh, another step forward and to really make a jump forward uh, as their guy? Um, He, oh. I hate talking about Lamar. Um, he definitely needs to. I, I think while losing Hollywood sucks a lot, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how much Hollywood wanting out was Lamar giving him all those targets. How if that correlated at all? Lamar's like, okay, maybe if I get him a whole bunch of targets, that'll make him happy. But mm -hmm. something to think I, about. Yeah, I, I know that we or at least me personally, I, I'm not giving the trust into our new receivers uh, or at least the guys we got, but he definitely needs to uh, kind of spread the ball around a little bit more. Um, oh, yeah, that would help. You know, mm -hmm. definitely definitely still feed Mark. I'm not saying to take it away from him. I'm just saying that he's going to have to build a lot of trust with these these new receivers over this all season. So that's definitely mm -hmm. something I'm looking forward to. Um I think he needs to definitely continue uh, practicing with the back shoulder throws. Mm. Um, oh, those will be nice. Yeah, because those – I feel like we haven't seen a lot of those. Um, we've seen some over-the-shoulder throws, mm -hmm. like the uh, the Marquise one against the Jets. But um, he just – we need – I think what we saw last year was more so the offensive line not really – giving him trust and confidence to be able to like stand in the pocket and make throws. So it was just, I think with everything combined, new offensive line, mm -hmm. um, hopefully a full off season of just a, a quiet August, no, no contract, anything. Uh, <laughs> and um, the full reps practice repetition. Uh, I think we'll see mm -hmm. a, a new and refined Lamar Jackson, in my opinion. Mm, I like that refined Lamar Jackson um, because from 2019, um, he's definitely it's, it's weird because if you if you as a fan, if you just look at his numbers, obviously his numbers have continued to decline since 2019. Uh, but if you actually watch him, uh, you can see uh, a lot of improvements that he's made uh, over the past couple of years uh, and especially last year. Even though I personally felt like uh, with the Ravens and just their passing game, uh, it it grew by force uh, because they didn't have that running game to lean on like they normally do. Uh, but I wasn't mad about it. Of course, it, it sucked that the, the, all those guys were hurt and that guys continued to be hurt. Um, but I was appreciative of the, the steps and the strides that the passing game took just as a whole because it showed uh, something that a lot of us already felt could happen. Um, but it showed the world like, hey, oh, oh, Ravens could pass the ball. Oh, yeah, oh, they can pass the ball. Like, oh, Ravens, they can't come back from being down, being down multiple. Oh, no, Ravens can come back. So it showed the world that um, so it's on full display. And that is probably one of the biggest reasons why I really wanted the Ravens to um, go out and, and go get that guy uh, at wide receiver this offseason. Um, because I just felt like with Lamar, um, I felt like he just really hasn't, he hasn't had that guy at outside receiver, uh, for out his, throughout his career. Um, cause they've had guys like Dez Bryant, Seth Roberts, uh, Willie Sneed, uh, and it's just, 
then of course you mix that in with the young guys, the rookies and whatnot, and then second, third year players too. Um, but he's just been missing, in my opinion, that guy. And I know a lot of people try to sprinkle in, oh, wait, Mark Andrews, he's like a number one receiver. Well, yeah, he's a tight end, though. He's not the number one wide receiver. He's a tight end. Um, so I would just love if the Ravens will go get that guy at wide receiver. But uh, that leads me to number seven. And I, I got to remember that he's number seven, too, because a lot of times I forget. I'm so used to the 12, even though it had only been a year. Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman, um, he seems to get that confidence to him that he wants to be that guy, he wants to be a leader, wants to take over. How you feel about Rashad Bateman going into 2022? I'm I'm very, very confident in uh in what he can do. I, I mm -hmm. think he he's um he's got all the tools in the toolbox to be a number one wide receiver, mm -hmm. uh to be an alpha. He's got the mentality, he's got like there's everything that he does is lockstep with other number one receivers in the league mm. in terms of like how, how he carries himself. Mm -hmm. The I think the route running is like the biggest selling point for me. The fact that he, he just gets open. Like that was, that was something that really makes me believe in him. So I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's his time to shine to, to be honest. I think he, he can go out there and, and, uh, and put up 1200, 1300 yards. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's that's definitely on the on the up upcoming for him. So, yeah, with, with Rashad Bateman, um, he's got all the potential in the world to to put up some nice numbers. And I think one of the biggest things that will uh, help him put up those numbers, something that you talked about earlier with Lamar Jackson, uh, with Hollywood, we know he got a, a, a lot of targets um, throughout his career here. Um, but is understandable because that was one of two of Lamar's go to guys. But now with him being gone. Uh, those targets, they're probably going to get spread around. Um, and with Rashad Bateman most likely being that that, that featured wide receiver uh, for the Ravens this year, we figure that he's going to get a lot of those targets. But something that's going to help him uh, when he has the ball in his hands, the yak. Uh, and that yak is something that the Ravens they struggle with. And they've been struggling with for, for a while now, too. Uh, but with Rashad Bateman, um, he that that route running is gonna go a long way. But I remember uh, even last year when he first stepped on the field, uh, there was that like crazy stat where every catch that Rashad Bateman was having, it would go for a first down. And, and the crazy part about that too was that they weren't all past the first down marker. So this was Rashad Bateman getting yak. So if we can imagine a, a, a full seat because we didn't get to have a full season with Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman, uh, because first Rashad missed those first, what, five, six games with, uh, I think, the groin injury? I forgot what it was. But, um, and then, so then he got to play a little bit with Lamar. It was like, okay, let's go. And then Lamar, he ended up going out. So they never really got to get it going consistently. So we never got to see the true potential of uh, those wide receivers and Lamar Jackson from last year. Uh, but now with Lamar being back healthy, Rashad being back, um, it's, it's exciting to think about uh, when it comes to that. So when it comes to the offense, in conclusion, what needs to be done in order for this Baltimore Ravens offense to help them reach the Super Bowl? So this is this is the uh, this is kind of the selling point for me. OK, they Mark Ingram said on Chris Sims podcast that they do 50 variations of run installs a week. Okay. Um, they, uh, they need, they just got to prioritize the pass game. I think if the Ravens want to win a Super Bowl this year, they got to prioritize being able to throw the football. Um, one of the mm -hmm. things that helped us so much in that 2019 season was we would get up early by throwing the football and then that would allow the defense to just go out there and play dime, play nickel and just go out there and feast. I mean, teams, mm -hmm. couldn't run, teams couldn't catch up running the football against us. Right. So they had to go out there and throw. And that's, that's what allowed uh, Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, um, mm -hmm. even God, God rest his soul, uh, Earl Thomas, um, go out there and make plays for us. Man. So <laughs> um, I, I kind of think of it like this, you know, when you're playing somebody in, in rock, paper, scissors, shoot, and, mm -hmm. They keep going to uh, they keep going to the scissors, and yeah. you're like, well, uh, you know, the first couple times it gets you, but then you're like, mm -hmm. well, I'm just gonna go to rock. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So 
I think the way the Ravens can really do this this year is uh, there's kind of this theory that you can take advantage of somebody without them knowing it. And I think that's something that they can definitely do this year with being able to throw the football uh, efficiently. And mm. even, even in high volume, in my opinion, I think that definitely need to correlate some volume this year. So I we'll like see, that. we'll see where the step goes, but I, I just think that they can't become predictable. I, I mm. there were so many times yeah. where like the, you know, they just, the, the end of 2020 where they they could even throw the football so they just started playing the teams like the Jags and Giants and they were just running so mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's going to do them any good this year I think they uh, that may win in the regular season but once you get the postseason they got a good old throw yeah um and something that you spoke about volume I, I remember having this conversation with my guy Josh uh, years ago um and he talked about how with the Ravens uh, especially in the passing game the the lack of volume uh, that they had throughout the regular season it ended up biting them in the butt in the postseason because if you've been doing something or even not doing something all year, then when it comes time for you to actually do it, then it's going to be like, oh, uh, especially if you haven't been doing it, then it's going to throw you off. It's going to throw you off your game. Uh, So, yeah, hopefully the Ravens can put some more emphasis uh, on that passing game, even with everybody back healthy, even with their, all their running backs back, all the 50 tight ends that they got on the squad with a healthy offensive line. Hopefully they still do put a lot of emphasis on continuing uh, to develop that passing game. But Yuri, I appreciate you uh, hopping on uh, to talk about the just the Ravens offensive mindset going into this upcoming season. Uh, one last time before we get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you at. Find me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore 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 Year. All right. So, again, that'll be linked down in the description. Just in case you get a little confused from all those underscores like I probably would. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all watching. And we out.